I don't know about you, but, but America is long overdue for a spiritual awakening. All right? America desperately needs a wake-up call with Jesus. Okay? Now, you've been maybe praying for this, but in these two chapters lays down some, some foundational principles about awakenings and revivals. And, and, and there's a lot of Christians that they're praying for awakening and revival, but we got to understand at least these three, right? They're, they're in the text, chapter 22, mainly chapter 23. Here's the first one, is that revivals and awakenings begin with a personal renewal to put God first. That's what, that's what King Josiah does in chapter 23, verse 3. He says, listen, before I can even ask anyone else, i got to put God first. He responds to the reading of the law, and he's like, he's moved with repentance. He mourns for his sin, his personal sins, but also the, the corporate sins. Like he, he's moved in that way. And so let that begin with you. So, so, so if you pray like this, like not just on Thursday, but every day for our nation, for others, just make sure you are experiencing personal renewal. Okay, it, it's, it's hypocritical to pray for a spiritual revival in the country or in the church when you're not putting God first in your own life. All right. Second principle that we see, God's people must prioritize the word of God and apply its truth to their lives. It's fascinating how the, the book whether it's the first five books of the Bible or it was Deuteronomy, got lost, of all places, in the dwelling place of God. And, and, and I know it's so easy to, to take your finger and start pointing, like, oh, I can't believe that, but let's look at us as we are personal living temples of the Spirit of God. And how often do we say, I'm too busy to read God's Word? We neglect it. Or, or, or how many times do we say, listen, hey, the Bible, man, it's not the easiest book to read. And it's true. It's not the easiest book to read. But say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to read it myself. I want someone else. Like, I want pastors. I want people on the radio. I want people on the TV. I want, I want authors to, to give me the Word of God. You know, I want them to feed me. So, so if you're going to prioritize the Word of God in your life, you've got to learn how to be a self-feeder. Right? And part of that is also not just me and God, it's also to read it in the context of community who people also want to say, put God first in their life. So, so you've got you to prioritize the Word of God. If you don't, you will let so many other things you let the friends, you let media, you know, politics, they, they will disciple you. Okay? They, they want to disciple you, but you're like, listen, if, you're, if you want renewal in your own life, if you want to see a spiritual awakening in the country, you're like, listen, i got to prioritize. i got to learn to be a self-feeder. Number three, God's people must confess their individual and their corporate sins and repent and follow God Faithfully. We see this in verse 3 of, of chapter 23, where they pledge themselves to God. That, that's just another way of saying they repent. You know, they're like, God, I repent. God, I pledge myself to you. And it's individual and corporate. Now, we live in America where it's all focused on the individual, right? And so we get, hey, our sins individually, but we might think, oh, no, I'm not responsible for other people's sins in the church. You know, like, like some people think that's not true, but, but in the Bible, you see, it's both and. Like, no, 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 I need to confess not only my sins, but also the sins of the church now and even in the past, all right? This shouldn't be theologically controversial, all right? We see it over and over. In the Bible. Now, there are some cultures that are the exact opposite of America. It's all about the community. 
and the individual gets lost. And so it's all about like confessing community and not the individual, right? So what you see in the Bible, again, maybe go on and be grounded, is you see it's both. And chapter 23, if you read it, you'll see, yes, it's focused on the, invi- the, the individual, but the rest of the chapter, right? King Josiah knows and leads an aggressive campaign. It says, listen, just because we said the words, God, I repent, just because we've confessed individual sins, we need to to make sure that that gets focused, that gets applied, that gets worked out in action in the community. And so you'll see in chapter 23, if you read it, there's all these uh, communal actions that take place. Because why? Because confession is individual and corporate. It's, it's, It's not either or, it's both and. 